It's ranking day! Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and we're going to start today off with a quickie. We're going to begin with the tight ends today. These are my preliminary rankings over here. These are going to be projections. So this is what we will be focusing on for the most part, but you can see a projected ranking over here just based on a number that's not on the screen. Then to the left of this, this is the player temperature gauge, uh, taking a look at factors as far as how the player has produced with the opportunities that they've gotten, the quality of those opportunities, as well as things like the Las Vegas line and just a straight up the matchup difficulty. So it's it's a matchup indicator of you know how well we're expecting that they may do this week or if factors are working in favor of them hitting this ceiling or maybe and the opposite and having a floor type of day. That's what this is. So obviously a Travis Kelsey floor day is about the same as a Tommy Tremblay. Tommy Tremble, is it? Or Tremblay? Uh, ceiling day. And over here, this is the expected rain. So this is just like a projection, except it's instead of being one number, it is a range. And in this video, I will just go over my rankings as far as my tight end ones, the, the fill-in tight ends, and then the, uh, the forgottens. And we will just be looking at a few of the guys who I have the most difference compared to the ECR. The ECR is the expert consensus ranking from Fantasy Pro's website as of Tuesday midday-ish. You can find my final rankings up on the website. They will go up on Thursday, but they will still be tweaked throughout the week at that point. But as of Thursday, uh, hopefully midday is always the goal. I will have my rankings up on the website, www.theffforge.com. There is a link down in the description for that. And then, of course, my final, final rankings, really, for to guaranteed see those, you can come and visit me one hour before kickoff on Sunday. There is an overseas game this weekend, I think 9.30 Eastern time, so don't forget about that when, uh, you know, as far as especially any kind of questionable players set an alarm clock, make sure a half hour before kickoff that everything is good to go. And I will not be uh, going up live before that set of games. So it would be before the main set, the, the noon set of games. Now let's look at my top 12 tight ends this week. Kick it off at number one with Travis Kelsey, followed by TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard, David Njoku, Zach Ertz, George Kittle, Pat Fryermuth, Kyle Pitts, Greg Dulcich, Gerald Everett, at number 11, Tyler Higby, and to wrap it all up, Cole Komet. Of this group, I have David Njoku 14 spots ahead of the ECR. The ECR, we don't know for sure that David Njoku is going to be playing this week. It's expected at this point, based on the news that we have, that he will be playing this week. So I'm ranking him as so for now. If he does play, give me all that. Look at, look at over here, going up against Miami. Just, oh, give me all the Njoku this weekend. Come on, baby. He was getting into a groove before his injury and going up against Miami's a eh, sweet matchup. It's tough to put him too high this week, and if anybody's going to put him too high, it looks like it's going to be me. Then I have Gerald Everett four spots behind the ECR. I have him at 10th. The ECR on him is a 6th. It's, it's nothing against Gerald Everett here. Obviously, David Njoku's a reasoning for one of those spots, but otherwise, like Kyle Pitts, it's just... A stab at that ceiling, man. I mean, they just have to connect on one of those deep throws, and Kyle Pitts is right up here, just like we saw that one week. Unfortunately, it just hasn't happened a whole lot this season so far. You just look over here at this massive ceiling going up against Carolina. His expected range ain't so shabby either. As far as tight ends go, most of the time, for most tight ends, it's not going to be a high point total. So give me that big ceiling. Give me that uh, that shot at, at glory because what an advantage it can give you. Now, Gerald Everett, I mean, I expected more from him this past week. There was a, an issue with a very low A dot, and I don't know that that low A dot thing isn't a part of a result of just this offense not being at its full power and dump offs having to happen. And San Francisco, is that who they're playing against, right? Yeah, San Francisco is expecting to be getting some of their front seven back. It looks like this week that's not going to be helpful for Gerald Everett. That's not going to be helpful for giving him more time to get downfield. There's still some remaining concerns there. 
And then let's move on to my number 12, the ECR 16. So I'm four spots ahead of the ECR, and that would be Cole Komet. It comes down to this right here, going up against Detroit. Love the matchup. We're in the tight end territory. I will say this. I don't know if it's Gerald Everett or Tyler Higby, but right around this range, and we'll just be safe. Between Tyler Higby and Dalton Schultz, just put them in whatever order you want. They all feel quite similar to me. I'm not trying to replace Dalton Schultz this week. If I have him just because he's 14th in some guy's rankings, they're, they're quite similar. Now let's move on to the back 12 here. Sounds like golfing. At number 13, I have Evan Ingram, followed by Dalton Schultz, Taysom Hill, Mike Gesicki, Cade Otten, Dawson Knox, Juan Johnson, Robert Tanyan, Foster Moreau, Noah Fant, Will Disley, and Logan Thomas to wrap it out at 24. Really only two to speak about here. Taysom Hill, I have five spots behind the ECR. I've met 15th. The ECR is 10 on him. Uh, the, the tight end position with additions like Cole Komet not being able to rule out players like Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett because of recent performances. Uh, players like Kyle Pitts having their ceilings. Pat Fryermuth coming back. David Njoku probably coming back. It's just getting a little bit deeper and this week there's just more guys that I will trust to probably have a little bit of a higher safer floor than Taysom Hill. And that brings us to my 17th ranked tight end, K. Dotton, who I have four spots behind the ECR. The ECR on him is 13. This is really sad. I mean, K. Dotton's my boy. I was on him before all the experts. But my projections for some reason just really are not loving him still. I don't quite understand why so much hate for him. However, I kind of do, I guess, because when entering in his stats, a lot of the... Uh, Advanced stats that I put in there actually got worse this past week despite his performance. Obviously, uh, you know, he now has a touchdown percentage, so that's helpful. If it's not for the Los Angeles Rams making a stupid decision, there's at least a 50% chance that Kate Otten doesn't have two catches, has like 30-something less yards, and doesn't have a touchdown, and then nobody's excited about him this week. So it... it it was really just that final drive, which we can't totally discount. And hopefully that will be something for them to build off of. That might have been the confidence builder. There's also a concern this week if Cameron Brait comes back. That could be at the very, I wouldn't say at the very least, but if we don't get any news and Cameron Brait's coming back, then k Dotton's going to be a risky start because we're not going to know which one's the, the starter if, if we don't get any news on that. So just uh, keep an eye out for that too if you are trusting k Dotton this week. But otherwise, fine play. I feel pretty comfortable this week. About 20, 21 tight ends in. Um, well, we'll say 21 because either Darren Waller is going to be ranked higher and then, and then Robert Tanya would be like 21. So I feel comfortable with any of those tight ends. I'm not getting desperate and trying to replace any of these guys if they are who I'm relying on. And so Foster Moreau's uh, ranking here is obviously dependent upon Darren Waller playing. So right before we get to that, there were two more tight ends that I have on here. Number 25 and 26 being Austin Hooper and Tommy Tremble. Who, Tremblay, I don't know. Who I just added on to my list here. I have him four spots ahead of the ECR. There's really nothing to chat about. I'm sure there's some guys that if I ranked, uh, maybe they would get projected better. But I really just try to stick to guys who I would have at least some potential of playing. And that's going to be the issue for James Mitchell. I, I don't have him ranked because, and, and really I didn't end up projecting him because when I looked at his usage, it was incredibly low despite him having that nice touchdown. But I also want to talk about James Mitchell. He's a prospect. He's super interesting. I, I remember him from this last draft class, and he stood out in a few ways. The ceiling is is high for him, somebody that would be super cool. You know, I wonder if he's part of why they were comfortable getting rid of TJ Hawkinson. I don't know, but absolutely love the dude he just didn't get the field onto the field enough for me to feel comfortable to to suggest anybody using him this week when you're on the field like 10 percent of the plays that's pretty low but uh awesome dude i'm hoping that i can be projecting him next week that will be cool so very excited for him and then darren waller if he is playing this week 
I would put him up at uh, 15. I would put him ahead of Taysom Hill, too. So that is the uh, tight ends. All of the positions will have their own videos today. They should be spaced out about every two hours. So look forward to the quarterback video next. And then in the afternoon today, there will be the wide receivers and the running back videos. I had some, uh, we'll call it technical issues or projections issues that uh, website taking longer than it normally does to get some stats so I could enter them in. So I might be a little bit behind schedule tomorrow. I know I am as of this recording. But that is it for the tight ends. Thank you so much. Peace out.